Yud is good, yeah. and your boy Tom back here with another video, and in this video today, guys, we're going to be going over and ranking our top 10 point guards in NBA 2K24, my team. Now, before I start this video, I want to say one of these guys ranked on my top 10s, I haven't actually used quite yet. I'm recording this on a Friday morning, so one of these cards, again, on this uh, top 10 uh, card I haven't used, but I do think is extremely good. It was just a matter of where does he rank. So again, I'll drop a gameplay on this card as well, and I'll talk about it when I get there, but just make sure that, that for that one guy, uh, th that's gonna be uh, one thing. Again, I'm not including gambling cards in this. Here's the deal, guys. Braun would be at my number one or two, for sure. The lowest these cards would be is number two. Braun at number two. Uh, you know, if, if if you wanted to talk about 100 overall MJ, he'd probably be at number two. Dark Matter MJ would probably be at number three or four on here. Even when you look at like a LaMelo boy, he'd be uh, somewhere on here. D-Book would be at number two. So, okay, a lot of these gambling cards are good, but I just don't want to have to do that. I think it's more fun to do it especially a top 10 without gambling cards. Now, again, when I talk about uh, when I talk about tier lists, then it's easier to do uh, or include them because I have a lot more room. Let's start off at number 10, Galaxy Opal Jason Kidd. Now, why am I including Jason Kidd? Because right now you can't get him unless you gamble. Well, here's the deal. You get him in a locker code. And if you're going to complain about a locker code card, I don't know what to tell you. What does Jason Kidd give you? Great defensively, good pro to a leaner, offensively good enough, 6'4", wide frame, good player, model player build. I just think Jason Kidd does a lot for us on the court. Now, do I think there's better point guards? Obviously, at this stage, Jason Kidd's no longer, you know, one of the best point guards in the game, but it's crazy. He came out nearly three months ago, and when you're not talking about gambling cards, he is still a top 10 point guard in the entire game. To me, that's absolutely crazy. It just shows kind of how rinse and repeat my team has been. But I do think Jason Kidd deserves his spot in here at number 10. At my number nine, a newer card here. We're plugging in the Galaxy Opal Gary Payton. Little different than the Jason Kidd. I'd say in front of you guys, I think Jason Kidd's release is better than Gary Payton's. However, I think Gary Payton does a lot of those other things better. Another thing I like about Jason Kidd, I think is leaner. Way better than Gary Payton's as well. Because if you look at GP, he's got that normal leaner. I do like the, the D-Book dribble style on Gary Payton. A lot of people do, although Kyrie probably is the better dribble style. I just think Gary Payton is a little better because he's just a little more updated. Playmaking, shooting, defensively, just a little bit better than a guy like Jason Kidd. I'm not saying either card is bad. I think they're actually relatively similar. Both cards, 6'4". Both cards going to go out there and compete, especially on that defensive end of the court. For me, though... I just think Gary Payton is that slightly better. Coming in at my number eight, we're plugging in James Harden. Now, whether you want to talk about the pro pass Harden or the free James Harden, I really do not care. I don't care because to me, I think the cards are basically the same. So we'll talk about the free James Harden for this video. But again, I think the cards are absolutely identical and I'd rank them in the exact same spot. So let's look at the free James Harden here. Harden base on quick MJ dribble style, pro leaner, but he's got a 98 three ball, a 95 speed. Defensively doesn't look that good, but I think his player model makes up for a lot of it. Again, he's 6'5", can go out there and get you some of those paint stops you want. The thing for me with James Harden is this. If you shoot the ball with James Harden, you're never going to miss any shots. His release so easy to time, so easy to green. Whether you got his release on quick or very quick to me, it doesn't matter. His release so easy uh, with that. And again, I used James Harden until up about him up until about a month ago, until I finally replaced him. But was one of my favorite point guards in the entire game for quite some time, and I think he deserves a lot of respect just for the easiness to use. Again, even if you're not good at the game, you can go out there and green shots with James Harden. And for that, I think he deserves some respect. At my number seven, another free card. This one was a free rush agenda. This card, Galaxy Opal, Austin Reeves. Now, Austin Reeves, a little different than James Harden. Austin Reeves has a way better leaner, has still that good release with it being on very quick. Pro 2 leaner, like I said, debug dribble style. The thing for me is... When, I feel like when 2K first came out, I really loved the D-Book Dribble Style. I really did. I thought the D-Book Dribble Style was absolutely fantastic. 
As times went on, and I know the push cross still is a thing, I feel like I've gotten less and less um, high on, on that D-Book dribble style. It's still fine. It's still a dribble style I respect. I just am not quite as high on it as I once was. Austin Reeves' defense obviously isn't great. He can go out there and compete. It's not horrible, but it's just not as good as you know uh, uh, as some of these other gar uh, guards featured on this list. To me, Austin Reeves is going to be one of the best offensive point guards in the entire game still to this day. Wish his standing dunk was a little bit higher. Wish his driving dunk was a little bit higher. But if you want a 300 and still have Austin Reeves, he can absolutely still play. At my number six, Dark Matter Gilbert Arenas. Now, for me personally... I do not love Gilbert Arenas. I have struggled so much with this card, and I'm on record for saying I personally am better with James Harden and Austin Reeves than Gilbert Arenas. But at the same time, all of those things can still be true, but I still think for the majority of the community, Gilbert Arenas is better. So for that, I feel like I've got to rank him higher. If I think that you guys are going to have more success with Gilbert Arenas than Austin Reeves, I got to put him higher. I think his defense is honestly better, even though he's not quite as tall. I think his dribble style, MJ dribble style is fine. KSP on very quick is good. I do wish his leaner was a little bit better. I think the normal leaner at this stage of my team, I've said it with Gary Payton, is just kind of troll. But I think Gilbert Arenas is fantastic. I, I genuinely do. Do I Am I that good with the card? No. And that's okay. You guys can still go out there and have a ton of success with Agent Zero for sure. I think, you know, his stats badges do tell the whole story when it comes down to it. There's not many more complete cards than Gilbert Arenas. Wish he was taller, wish his leaner was a little bit better. But those are really the only two things I can really hate on if we're talking about Gilbert Arenas and the things I do wish that he did a little bit better. At my number five, Galaxy Opal Sean Livingston. And this is the card that I want to that, that that I want to spend some time talking about. Because at the time I'm recording this, I've not used Sean Livingston. So go to the Sean Livingston gameplay right now. Cause at the time you're watching this, it will be released. And see how to see how see, see where I'm at with Sean Livingston. Okay, see where I'm at. Because right now it's tough. I love his three ball. I like his speed. I like the potential of his defense. I think there's a limit to how good he can be, though. Jaden Springer based on very quick. Jetty Osmond upper, I think, is going to be great. It just comes down to how good is that release. Can Sean Livingston be a primary ball handler? And can he, you know, compete on defense? Can he fit that switch on meta? Can he, you know, be that man defensively? Those are the couple of things that I need to figure out. But the more I look at this card, the more I think, how can he not? Be top five at the point guard position right now. How can he not? Six, seven. He should be able to fit the switch on meta. Should be able to, you know, at least be that secondary boy under there next to a guy like Glenn Rice. And even to me, I like Clyde Drexler a lot, but I think Sean Livingston has potential to be literally just as good, if not better. I think there's potential there. So again, watch my watch my Sean Livingston gameplay. See where I'm at on him. But for now, as I am diving into this, I think he's good here at my number five. At my number four, I'm plugging in Dark Matter Eddie Jones. You guys might be like, Ty, why do you have Dark Matter Eddie Jones higher than Sean Livingston? I think it's relatively simple. You look at the badges, you look at the defense, Eddie Jones is going to be better. There's no real questions asked there. The one thing about Eddie Jones is the release. The more I've used it, the more I've kind of gotten comfortable with it. I'm not saying it's the best release in the game because it's not, but I am saying it is for sure a release that you guys can go out there and use and have some success with. Meanwhile, he does have the Pro 2 Leaner, which again, at this stage of my team, guys, I'll be, I'll be willing to say, I think the Pro 2 Leaner matters about as much as any other stat, any other badge, any other release. So somebody has the Pro 2 Leaner, I'm personally going to respect it. The thing for me with Eddie Jones, the debug dribble style, again, I'm just a little iffy on right now. And I, I just don't know, again, I've got I've, my point guard position stacked right now, but I just don't know if I can be higher on Eddie Jones than number four. Again, if you got Eddie Jones, if you grinded out, trip with it offline, you got a really good point guard, but I think number four is the right spot. Number three, Galaxy Opal Drew Holiday. And I know some people aren't gonna like this, especially that he's over Sean Livingston. Here's where it starts. Hall of Fame Immovable Enforcer. And I know you guys are going to be like, really, Ty? That badge is that important? I think it's super important. He's got the Drew Holiday base on very quick. MJ Drew was tough. For me personally, I've had more success with Drew than Eddie Jones, than a guy like Gilbert Arenas. Sean Livingston, it's to be determined right now, but I think I'm going to like Drew Holiday more. And so I'm going to put him higher. And I think for the average casual, with how good Drew Holiday is on defense, they're going to like the card too. Say I'm gassing Drew, say I'm, I don't know what I'm talking about, all these things that I'm sure a lot of people are thinking right now. 
But if you don't know how to use Duralite, I don't know what to tell you guys. Has released so quick, straight up and down, relatively easy to green after you get the hang of it. I mean, it is kind of a weird release, but again, once you get the hang of it, it is a okay, just fine. Wide player model, Hall of Fame immovable enforcer. At some stage, we gotta respect defense, and Drew Holiday plays a lot of it in my team. At my number two, Dark Matter Clyde Drexler. Now, right now, it's a, it's a struggle for me with Clyde. Why? I have to run him at the shooting guard position. Why? Because I pulled Dark Matter MJ. But I'm getting to, to the point where I might just bench Dark Matter MJ and run Clyde at point guard and figure out the shooting guard position. Because I think Clyde so much better at point guard than shooting guard. Here's the deal, guys. 6'7". I know his player build isn't necessarily the greatest. And I, again, I'm, I, I'll be one that I'll go out and admit that straight up to you guys. But even without the best player build in the game, really solid defense offensively again can do enough for you on the court Clyde base on very quick is solid pro two leaner is great obviously the Kyrie dribble style is really solid I just don't see the negatives with Clyde and, and, and again some people may might think that release is a little bit slow some people might not want to grind for Clyde but I'm being honest here's the thing I like about 2k right now is you can somewhat grind for one of the best teams in the game and I like that Clyde fits that narrative coming in at my number two at my number one, no surprise, whether you want to plug in the free SGA or the pro pass SGA, I don't care. To me, both SGAs are the top point guard in the game right now, not behind gambling. Now, let's talk about the differences. This free SGA, SGA based on quick, pro pass SGA, SGA on very quick, Kyrie dribble style for the pro pass, MJ dribble style for the free. Are, is that a big difference? It's a somewhat big difference, but I don't think it's enough of a difference for me to move the cards to a difference here. Like both those, in my opinion, are still just fine. It really just comes down to it is a slight difference that gives you a little bit of a benefit. Both cards still really good. I, I, I don't see how somebody would not put SJ at their number one point guard right now in my team. And I know somebody's looking at this. Where's Ben Simmons? Look, it's, it, these are non-gambling cards. If you want to put Ben Simmons up here, number one, do what you got to do. But again, if I put gambling cards in here, it basically fill the top 10. And I don't want to have to do that. That's going to wrap it up for me and my video today, guys. Let me know your thoughts on this top 10 down below in the comments. Who was I too high on, too low on it? Ultimately, who did I miss out on? Drop a like on the video. Subscribe if you are new. As always, man, I love you guys. Have a blessed day.